Neapolitan pizza. Bubbly, airy, goodness, and like any others. Cooked in a high temperature oven in under two minutes, the crust is the true star of this dish. Authentic recipes calls for double zero flour. Does it make a difference? And what's the best substitute? I tested out the same recipe with double zero, bread flour, and all purpose flour to find out. My finding is that the myriad of YouTube channels that casually tells you to just use bread flour in place of double zero should test out their own advice first, which should prompt them to do more research. Yes, shots fired. See, the advice is commonly given because double zero has a high protein content of over 12%, which is similar to bread flour in the U.S. But protein content isn't the only factor at play here. Water absorption is an even bigger factor. Bread flour is made from hard wheat, which causes more damaged starch in the grinding process, resulting in high water absorption. Double zero is made from soft wheat, similar to cake and pastry flour. With low water absorption, I'm making a 66% hydration no knead dough with each flour. The hallmark of Neapolitan style pizza dough is high salt, low yeast, no fat. The higher than usual salt content helps building the gluten structure, but also hinders yeast activity. So I'm starting all three dough with a quick polish. That is a 100% hydration mix of water and flour with the yeast added before the salt and the rest of the flour is added. This high water content creates an optimal environment for yeast activity, and it will produce a subtly more flavorful crust. Here I'm mixing 200 grams of water with 200 grams of flour, along with a quarter teaspoon of yeast. Resting time for the polish depends on the temperature. At room temperature, just two to three hours will do. You can also leave it in the fridge for eight hours or overnight. This polish step is optional. The flavor difference is subtle. Feel free to just mix everything together and stick the dough in the fridge. Here are mine at the end of two hours. The all-purpose already has a good amount of gluten developed from the orderlies, but it's somewhat runny with weak attachment. The bread flour, in comparison, pulls together much better, but it's also quite a bit drier. The double zero has strong gluten development, like the bread flour, but a brinier consistency closer to the all-purpose. The visual difference is subtle at this stage, but the weight of the pull is quite discernible if you're making, say, bread flour and all-purpose side by side. Now add half a tablespoon of fine table salt to the polish. I know this looks like a lot of salt. Don't worry, it won't taste like that baked. Stir well and add flour. 100 grams here, or half as much as what you first added. See why I'm going with 66% hydration? Easy to remember. If you don't have a scale, two cups of flour weighs about the same as one cup of water. You can start with that for the polish, and add another cup for the final dough. I find it a lot easier to work in the flour by hand. Just mix until there is no more dry bits left, and let them rise in the fridge, at least overnight, and ideally for two to three days. Here are mine at the end of three days. The double zero flour yields a loose, sticky dough. All purpose is somewhere in the middle, and the bread flour yields a visibly tighter dough. Now you're ready for shaping. Punch down the flour to remove large air pockets. See how sticky this double zero dough is? Divide into roughly equal portions. On a well floured surface, shape the dough into round balls. Here I'm starting with the bread flour dough. Which is the least sticky and easiest to work with. Rest the rolled ball on a large sheet lined with saran wrap. Now the all-purpose dough, which is softer and stickier. You're gonna want to flour your hand before rolling. Place the rolled dough at least three inches apart from each other, as they will spread after they rest. Now the double zero dough, which needs like a high hydration dough at just 66%. Noticeably different from the other two. It's not terribly hard to work with while cold. Just keep in mind this gets even softer as it warms up to room temperature, which will get messy quickly if you don't flour thoroughly. But the upside is this dough is much much easier to stretch out. Let them rest covered for at least an hour for the gluten to relax. Otherwise, the dough will be very tight and difficult to stretch. Here they are after resting. If you look closely as I'm peeling off the top layer, you can see that the bread flour didn't at all stick. 
The all-purpose dough got pulled a little, and the double zero dough moved quite a bit. You're gonna want to get a floured plate ready to dip the dough into. Any self-respecting pizza maker would just pick this up by hand or with a dough scraper. Anyone else can take the easy way out and just cut and peel the wrap off. Let gravity work for you instead of against you. Neapolitan pizza has a learning curve. I would not call this newbie friendly. If you mess up at this stage, you will have to reshape and wait for another hour for the gluten to relax. So why not make things a little easier for yourself, right? Dip the dough into the flour right away. Flour both sides, and you're ready to stretch it out. Because the double zero dough is extremely soft, you don't need a rolling pin. Just press from the center to the edge, and you'll notice how pliable this is. Make sure the outside is thicker than the center, and you can roll around the edge with your knuckles until you have a 12-inch pizza. This is oddly satisfying. Break up any large bubbles you see so that the pizza will bake evenly. Dust your pizza peel with semolina or plain flour. I like to prep my pizza quickly on the peel so I don't risk tearing it later. You will need to move fast or this will stick. So get all your ingredients ready before you put a stretched out dough on the peel. I'm making a simple margarita with olive oil, tomato puree, fresh mozzarella, and fresh basil which should absolutely be added before baking to infuse the pizza with amazing flavor and not used as a garnish like some afterthought just because it's photogenic. Into the pizza oven it goes. With a high temperature oven, I bake this for 90 seconds closed, give it one turn, and let it go for another 30 to 40 seconds. If you're using a pizza steel under the boiler in a home oven, this might take longer, maybe two to three minutes. Definitely keep the light on and watch closely. Let me know in the comments if you're wondering if pizza ovens are worth it. I'm thinking of doing another review video for my fellow frugal foodies. This definitely has a learning curve. I've made at least a dozen sloppy pizza. So if the pizza comes out not perfectly round, cut yourself some slacks. My family and I ate every crumb of those ugly pizzas, happily. I love how the basil is still very green after the whole pizza is cooked. I repeated the same step with the other two doughs. Look how easily the bread flour dough peels off. The tightness of the dough actually makes the stretching process harder. Look how the dough kind of bounces back when pressed. This is a sufficiently rested dough, yet the gluten is still so tight it takes a lot longer to stretch. Even as you think it's big enough, it springs back. On the upside, this is much less likely to break compared to the other two. You might want to toss it back and forth a couple times to loosen it up, which you won't need to and probably shouldn't try it with the other two flowers. Now the all-purpose. It's so sticky the wrap is actually hard to peel off, definitely closer to the double zero than the bread flour. When you press on the flour, it doesn't bounce back nearly as much. It doesn't stretch out quite as easily as the double zero but the spring bag is a lot less than the bread flour, which is expected since it's made from mixed hard and soft wheat. Based on the wheat types, a potentially good substitute might be pastry flour or cake flour, mixed with some vital wheat gluten, which will increase the protein content while retaining the low water absorption of soft wheat. If you're interested in another deep dive comparison video on those, leave a comment. Anyone else nerd sniped about pizza? Here it is, the all-purpose dough baked. Actually quite light and fluffy. You can see good gluten development and big bubbles. Not too shabby even compared to the real deal, the double zero pizza. But the signature side view from the proper flour is unmistakable. Thing in the center, big, puffy, bubbly edge. I would probably let this go 15 seconds more next time for some more leopard spot, but didn't want to overcook the other two for this experiment. Here's the bread flour pizza. For the same cooking time, it browns more. Perhaps the most photogenic out of the three, but the crust is a lot firmer. Side view confirms very strong gluten formation, but less open crumb. Still very tasty, but much more like a New York style pizza. Here they are side by side. If you enjoy kitchen experiment like this, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. 
For more detailed information about weed types and starch damage, check out my blog post linked in the description. Thanks for watching.